Horsley in the 10 round out your field. All right, Corey, a little bit of track work during the extended intermission time. A little work over in turns one and two. As they come out of turn four, the green flag will wave. They'll go diving into the freshly tilled soil, and Robbie Ewing will stay out in front, but it's a three-wide battle for that top spot as J.C. Morton goes to the high side. Quentin Taylor started outside row two. He falls all the way back to sixth on that opening lap, but taking out that top spot is Cole Campbell, who started back in row two. He's now out in front, but a whole gaggle of cars and getting sideways over in turn two. Flag again, and it'll be Cole Campbell that leads him into turn one and two. And J.C. Morton gets out right behind him, but again, over in turn two, we've got one lap down, 19 remain here for the B-Mods. And a good hole shot again by a two-car length advantage as a green flag waves, and we are back at it here at Lucas Oil Speedway. Robbie Ewing back in second. Here comes Morton on the outside. He will stay with that high line, stay in the accelerator just a touch longer, trying to get the outside of that 32 machine, unable to do it that time off of turn four. He will tuck right back in line. Now go right back to work again over in turn one. He will get to the outside this time, keep that momentum up off of turn two, and look to grab that spot. J.C. Morton was your top driver in this series a year ago. Robbie Ewing was the number nine finisher in the points as Morton has cleared him as they work their way into one and two now. And Morton goes back up to the top of the racetrack to try and get a run to chase down Cole Campbell. So Campbell the next in line for J.C. Morton. Robbie Ewing back in third. They're kind of dicing it up a little bit further on back in the pack as the 0-2 machine of Cole Dinner goes to the outside of Brian McCowan, takes that spot away, and then he will edge out in front as the field starts to get spread out all the way through the field from first all the way back to about 12th with a couple car links gap in, be in between each one of them. Your reigning national champ has moved from 15th all the way up now into the top 10. Chris Jackson bounces the 65 through turn number two. Has a couple of cars in front of him now to try and run down here as Cole Campbell continues to lead here. Six laps in the books. And the thing with Chris Jackson getting through that traffic, Brian McCowan and Cole Dinner just keep swapping spots back and forth. They're clogging up progress for Chris Jackson. As of right now, it's McGowan in front. Dinner has fallen back behind him. Now a little movement up front as Morton to the top side. Tries to get around Cole Campbell. Will have that high line work, and he carries so much momentum coming off of turn two. Stays to the outside. Tries to take that advantage down the front stretch, and will. He'll grab that spot away from Cole Campbell. Lead change up front goes to J.C. Morton. Lap number eight, J.C. Morton takes over the lead. He did get into the back a little bit of Cole Campbell and is now trying to pull away after Campbell led the first seven laps of this 20-lap feature and a good little gap between he and J.C. Morton as they roll around uh, through the timing circuit that time by. Yeah, you can see that right rear crinkled up a, a little bit on that number 22C of Cole Campbell. And now you do see Chris Jackson He's just having a tough time working up through the field. Finally starting to get to that inside and pick off a car here and there. He knocks Cole Dinner down one spot. And now he's looking for more as he gets the inside of Brian McGowan. And McGowan and Dinner had been side by side for about five straight laps. Jackson finally able to get around them. And it's pretty much nose to tail racing in front of Jackson from there as he tries to track down Dylan McGowan now, the young driver in the eight. But Jackson bounces it through that rough spot over there in turn two. He'll have some work to do now as J.C. Morton starting to check out. He now has a half a straightaway advantage as he is in turn one. Car goes into the inside. That's Jimmy Cummins on the back stretch. He stays in motion, so he will take a left-hand turn, come to the infield. His night is done. So lucky break for J.C. Morton there as he has a good advantage over Cole Campbell, able to hang on to it as the caution flag stays tucked away in the flag stand. J.C. Morton's lead, almost two seconds the last time around. 
But now lap traffic sometimes, Shane, we've seen this every week, can be the great equalizer. How easily can J.C. Morton make his way through the traffic that's at the back of the field now in front of him? Well, you see it just about every week. Something happens. Either the leader spins out all on their own. They get caught up in traffic. A caution comes out and it lets the field bunch back up with them. And that's what the leader never likes to see is the holy trifecta there of bad news that is able to bring the rest of the field back up to you. So J.C. Morton now working through lap traffic. Next to fall by the wayside is Dayton Pursley. A good battle now for second is Robbie Ewing looking to the inside of Cole Campbell. Doesn't make the move that time. Stays right behind him as they cross underneath the flag stand. He will have four more laps to try to grab second spot as J.C. Morton has checked out. One car goes looping themselves around over in turn four. That's the 17 of Rod Corden. It will stay green. Yellow stays tucked away again. J.C. Morton's had a lot of luck on his side in this race so far. He gets around Dayton Pursley with three laps left. Stays on that high groove, and we'll see the, cl the uh, Jumbotron click away one more lap. 18 down, two to go. As Morton continues to be well in control in this one, we go back to the fight for second where Robbie Ewing is looking to the inside of the 22 of Cole Campbell. Lap traffic up in front of them as well as the white flag comes out for Morton. Final time around for him as he checks out of turn number two. Robbie Ewing to the inside of the 22 of Cole Campbell. Unable to do anything at all. Keaton Allen stays behind him. Then Taylor Moore get, just now gets passed by Chris Jackson. And the checkered flag does fly for J.C. Morton. He will take home the checkers week one of the season here at Lucas Oil Speedway. The 25 lap thousand dollar to win feature for the Orsa Auto Marine and RV ULMA late models. The late models get loud and we go to racing. Green flag goes and it's the flash and Caden Cornell out in front with cars bouncing all around the track behind them. Cornell slips in front of Finneral, the defending track champion and will try to lead the field around for lap number one and the white flag does just that and what better birthday present could it be for car owner Rick Hoover than to see Caden Cornell and Andy's Fools and Custard victory lane tonight as Josh Poe spins around on the back straightaway bringing out caution number one and there's another hard collision as Jessen couldn't get rolled up in a late model feature of 2019 as Cornell gets on it and he is off to the races rolling that 50 around the top of the racetrack with Russell and Finnewald giving chase. Morant gets a good run off of turn number two, trying to take control of the number four spot and get it away from the Royal Missouri, Shane Essery. Morant clears Essery, and it's a three-car race for second place. Finnewald now closing the gap between he and your race leader, Caden Cornell, but he gives up some momentum down the back straightaway. Cornell rolls it off the top of turn number four to lead lap number three. Now three down, 22 to go as Fairwell tries his hand at the bottom of the racetrack. But Shaney's not really finding a lot of grip down there. That car keeps yeah. drifting and bouncing up the track. Yeah, it's starting to get a little more space in between those top four cars. And Corey, you mentioned right before that last restart, your top three in the points were all in the top four spots. In case anybody forgets, last year only four drivers won in this division, and they are your top four drivers right now. Caden Cornell got himself a couple of wins back in second. You got Johnny Fenewald. He led the way with five victories on the season. Then back to Jason Russell, who had one, and Aaron Morant finished the season with three. Side-by-side -side racing back behind our top seven cars. But about one through seven all lined out nose to tail here. And it's a two-man getaway right now for Caden Cornell and the flash Johnny Fittewell as they have put a big gap between themselves and cars three, four, and five behind them. Cornell will wheel it around through turn four. Fittewell's really up close now as Johnny has cut down the differential between he and the race leader. They will roll just about a half a car length separating them off of turn number two now. 
And this is going to be where it's interesting to see how much Caden Cornell has grown in the last year. He comes in as a rookie in this class, vies for a championship, and now he's out in front of the defending champ. And what has he learned? What has he learned as a driver on how to hold that spot, how to hold off guys? Is he able to do that? He does it again here. Eight laps in the books, lap nine underway as Caden Cornell takes a little bump through two and tries to hold on to the lead in front of Johnny Finnewald. That lead was over a half a second two laps ago. Now it's down to two tenths of a second as they start to find their way to the tail end of the field now. Side by side, Finnewald and Cornell through one and two. Back behind them, Jason Russell holds on to third place. Aaron Morant in fourth and the 15 of Shane Essery are your top five cars now with 10 laps in the books. And here comes one of those three things that a leader doesn't want to see. Lap traffic and it is thick up in front of them. Not just with those two cars but once you get to that next pack there is going to be a lot of traffic. Dalton Imhoff gets split by Johnny Finnewald and Caden Cornell and with a good line off of Phil Finnewald for the first time tonight is going to take the race lead. And he uses Imhoff as a pick to get past Cornell. And that's the difference between a veteran driver and a second year late model driver as Cornell now finds himself in second place behind the flash. The next lap car in front of your race leaders is your ULMA late model rookie of the year a season ago, Tucker Cox out of Jefferson City. Finnewald now with about a three car lengths advantage over Cornell. Now the gap has really grown, Shane, back to Russell and Aaron Morant now who takes over the third spot away from the 2J of Jason Russell. Now Imhoff spins over in turn number two. Cars behind him and 12 laps between he and an opening night win here to kick off the 2019 racing season. Bryant goes to the bottom of the track. Cornell goes high. Shane Essery slow. Puts his car down on the infield. See if he'll stay there and if we can stay green. Fiddlewald leads him around again. Can't tell if Essery's going to make the left turn. He does. Cornell and Morant battling now. And Caden Cornell gets a great run off the top of turn number two to take sole possession of second place away from the 1X from Richmond, Missouri. Fairwald under the flag stand that time has a little more than a second lead over the number two race car on the track behind him. Caden Cornell with 10 laps to go. Morant sits in third, Russell in fourth. Larry Ferris dive bombs around the 31 of Cole Henson and takes a spot away from the hammer. Now this is what we saw in the heat races, Shane. Because of the restart, because there's no lap traffic issues right now, look at the lead that Johnny Finnewald is starting to grow over the second and third place cars as they go side by side through one and two. Well, and you've got to think, early in the race, whenever he was behind Caden Cornell, he was right there with him, couldn't really get around him. It was not until they got to lap traffic that Finnewald was able to get around him. Now you've got to think, he knows between now and lap 25, He's probably going to catch up with the tail end of the pack. He wants to get as much room as he can between him and second place before he gets there. Aaron Morant with three wins a season ago. Caden Cornell with two wins in 2018 as they continue to duke it out for second place. But all the while, the flash is just running away as he is going down the back stretch now trying to get away from the white 5-0 of Caden Cornell. A lot of space out on the racetrack now. Shane with a few cars off the grid has allowed everybody to kind of get some room now. But Jason Russell is getting a handful now. Cole Henson goes door handle to door handle with him. And Russell gets a good run down the back stretch. And a good battle for second place. Aaron Morant has not been able to get around Caden Cornell. And Caden hasn't been able to check out away from him. 21 laps down, four to go, but Johnny Finnewald has found the back bumper of the 13 of Sean Whitman. Whitman gets put a lap down by your race leader, 
And now Fittleward will look at Dalton Emhoff, who spun and brought out the caution a little while ago. Three laps to go now. Cornell still out in front of Morant by about a car length as they will roll through three and four. Caden Cornell giving up a spot, and now he goes under the wire as Morant goes underneath the 50. Caden Cornell a little off the pace here as the white flag flies for Johnny Finnewald. Cornell with damage to the right side of that race car, and now he has lost second place and continues to drift back in the field, losing two more spots. But it will be the 21, your defending racetrack champion, the Flash, Johnny Finnewald, who makes his way around to the checkered flag. And now we are ready for the modifieds out of turn four. It'll be John Sheets leading them to the line. The green flag in the air. He's going to be tough to beat from up front. But Ronnie Woods will try to do something about it. And here comes the 90 of Terry Schultz. He'll make some noise as well as he dives to the inside of Sheets. Super 8 about ready to go down to the 90 as Schultz flies off of turn four. Unable to do it that time around as Sheets just barely hangs on to it. But the battle continues over in turn two. Side by side for first, side by side for third, and then Darren Fuquay as the yellow flag will fly back and forth for the final five laps of one race. Oh yeah, it was one amazing show here at the Diamond of Dirt Tracks. We are back in the way, one lap in, see if we can get them all stretched out and get a couple more laps under our belt as Sheets in the middle groove pushes Schultz down to the low side. Now here's Fuquay riding on the high side. He's got Ronnie Woods in front of him and then the 16 out in front of him as well. That is Austin Siebert, who is in third. Woods is in fourth. Fuquay is in fifth. Fuquay picks off Ronnie Woods. He'll have his eyes set on the 16 of Austin Siebert. As Sheik stays up top, Schultz gets pushed out of his line and he loses a lot of ground to Sheets up front as he had to lift off the accelerator, slide high on the track. And now he will drop back into second, Siebert and Fuquay, both on his tail. On deeper back in the pack, two wide. Fight for six, that is personally on the inside. And then you got the 98 of Peyton Phillips on his right. And Ronnie Woods, he is the one that has dropped anchor this time. He was up on that front row, and now all of a sudden he has fallen by the wayside. Fuquay has gotten around Siebert. And a spinner in the middle, and quickly the window net will come down, as that is the 11 of Scotty Boo. Nice piece of driving there by Boo to get it down onto the infield, keep everybody under green here. Three wide, deeper in the pack, on back. Now the middle of the field is all starting to bunch up. As Chase Domer goes to the inside to get around the 9-D-8 of Peyton Phillips. Jason personally has a mirror full of the 02 of Tanner Mullins. And now Fuquay looking to the inside of Terry Schultz. John Sheets continues to check out a two and a half second advantage over Schultz and Fuquay as those two cars now side by side and Fuquay drops back in behind the number 90. Starting to catch up a little more with lap traffic, but look at that mess of cars on deeper in the field. They are three and four wide coming off of turn four. That's what I was getting ready to say. Three wide coming out of turn two now. Peyton Phillips trying to get clear of the mess in the 9D8. Gets a little bit of room, but not much, as there is just a traffic jam of cars all hemmed in together. Dustin Hodges in the 22H among them, and now it looks like Shane Darren Fuquay has gotten around the 90 of Terry Schultz, but it's a big gap between he and John Sheets. Over three seconds separate Darren Fuquay and your race leader. Terry Moore. Tanner Mullins, that is, will get past Jason Pursley. He will move into fifth position. So you got John Sheets across the line now, then back to Darren Fuquay, which is about a half a straightaway advantage for Sheets. Then Schultz, then Siebert, and then a little while further back, it goes to Tanner Mullins.
single file on deeper in the pack as that gaggle of cars is now spread out a little bit further. And it is John Sheets looking at lap traffic in front of him. Next to go down on the hit list is Kyle Thompson. Driver from Joplin, Missouri in the 292 trying to not go a lap down as he's trying to keep the Super 8 behind him. Sheets gets a great run down the back straightaway now and closes the distance between he and the 292. And a little bit of a battle there will start to cut down the gap between he and the big time bail bonds car driven by Darren Fuquay. So with seven laps left, John Sheets would love to see this thing go green the rest <laughs> of the way. But the bad news on that is if it does go green the rest of the way, look at what he's got to weave his way through to stay ahead of Darren Fuquay. And I will tell you, Darren Fuquay is one of the best in the business of getting through traffic. He gets through lap traffic like nobody's business. He'll now have a car in between he and the race leader, John Sheets, as the 292 of Thompson. Now we've got a car off the pace, Shane, down here in turn number four, pulling off. Is that the 18 junior? That's Chase Sig. So that is one less car that John Sheets has to get around, as next in line is the 85 of Tyler Shaw out of Mexico. About a three-car length deficit there. Now Lucas Gibbs will go to the inside. One less car for John Sheets to get around. So with 17 laps down, three laps to go. It is John Sheets out in front. One win on the season last year took him a long time to get there. As he will get to the inside of the 85 of Tyler Shaw. But that car one lap down, one lap to go. One half a lap left for Super 8. No lapped cars to worry about this time as he comes out of turn four. Bruce Gordy has the checkers in hand and waves it for the 8S of John Sheets. The O'Reilly Auto Parts street stocks will come screaming to life. We're going to have our first street stock race winner here in about 20 laps. Johnny Coates shoots out in front of the field. The Buckhorn Bullet and Toby Ott, the last two track champions behind him, as the driver from Joplin, Missouri, will try to lead him around through lap number one. Well, we promised you this was going to be fun with those cars up front. And it is not going to disappoint Bobby Barnett also making his voice heard as he is back in fifth right on that back bumper. He is pushing that number 11 up the field. The 11 driven by Derek Brown. He has been in the mix for some big race wins here before and might figure in to this one before the night is over. Big names all over those top six spots as Johnny Coates gets a good lead on Toby Ott. David Hendricks now gets a good run off the top of turn number two and tries to drive down onto the 27. They'll work their way through three and four now, bring it down the front stretch. It's Coates, Ott, Hendricks, Brown, then Bobby Barnett, your top five. Behind them, James Flood, who had a good run early on. I'll tell you right now, it doesn't look like anybody's got anything for the 35. It's only three laps in. He has started to pull away from both Ott and Hendricks. Johnny Coates, a 12-year racing veteran with that Hatfield engine under the hood. Good power plant for him that is allowing him to pull away from the man who won the last race of the season, Toby Ott, and then a driver who won six straight to claim that championship a season ago in David Hendricks. Bobby Barnett in the 27 from Republic, Missouri, taking his spot away from Zegan. The 35Z races right back to try and reclaim it. Six laps down, 14 to go, and 
And right now it is kind of a one-horse race. Shane as Derek Brown takes it into the infield. A cloud of dust, and he's right back onto the racing service, just taking a shortcut over on the back side of the track. Well, the off-road tracks off to our, what, what is that, east? I don't know my direction is quite so well, but... It's over there in the dark. Yeah, to the right. Otten Hendricks door-to-door again, where they have been pretty much for the first seven laps of this one, continuing to contest for that number two spot. All the while, Johnny Coates just jamming around the racetrack. Coates will let the car drift up to the top of the track, down the back straight away, and then goes right through the middle of three and four. This time it looks like the 27 and the 54 gain a little ground on our race leader. The differential now less than a second between Coates and Toby Ott. Zach Zegan has sole possession of fourth place. Bobby Barnett behind him rounds out the top five. Flood into the sixth spot. Well, you would think as two cars battle side by side, they would lose ground in a race leader, but not the case as Johnny Coates has a mirror full of both David Hendricks and Toby Ott, and they are catching up with him as they go side by side. Jay Profet. Prevet parks the 25 triple X on the middle of the infield, and the 27 and the 54 are knocking on the door of Johnny Coates' 35. Ott's got the preferred line around the bottom of the track, and it looks like he and Hendricks were there if momentarily going to try and split him. Hendricks has the lift off, loses a little momentum, and it's a drag race between Coates and Ott down the front stretch, but Johnny Coates continues to lead this one, 12 down, 8 to go. Now they'll start to come upon some lap traffic now. Coates still keeping that 35 right in the middle of the racetrack, Ott at the bottom. Toby Ott was almost there that time, but it's still Ott leading for another lap. Hendricks gets a good run off of two, tries to get his nose back into the race for the top spot. Four cars all vying for that top spot. Johnny Coates continues to hold on to the lead, but by barely half a car length now as there are six laps to go. Hendricks trying his hand around the top of the racetrack now, seeing if he can find some grip up near the cushion. Now Zach's again pulling alongside the Buckhorn Bullet. So a battle for first, a battle for third. All four cars just bobbled up. And now Toby Ott gets a good run off the bottom of turn number two, trying to take away the top spot from Johnny Coates. Ott will lead for the first time now with four laps to go as it had been all Johnny Coates for the first two-thirds of the race. It's again is taking the spot away from the Hendricks, and now it's all shuffled up as the 35 Z is trying to run down your race leader, Toby Ott. Johnny Coates has drifted all the way back to fourth, David Hendricks in third. Bobby Barnett browning out the top five, and something has let go on the 35. Johnny Coates is off the pace, and he is pulling off the racetrack now with less than three laps to go. The 35 trying to limp his race car back to the pit area, and that means Toby Ott is just two laps away from starting 2019 the way he ended 2018. The 35Z. Zach Zagin. Closes right up on the bumper of the 27 Ott. And the white flag flies. One lap to go now. A bunch of lap traffic in front of Toby Ott. He slides up the track and then again bounces through two and loses momentum. That opens the door for the Buckhorn Bullet. David Hendricks flies it around the top of the racetrack now as he tries to get a spot away. But it will be Toby Ott starting off 2018 or 2019 as he ended 2018 as your race winner.